Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, not always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to look at some trademarks over in Japan and what that might mean for the Pokemon trading card game. Good stuff. And we need to look at a really cool new product, which is a little bit expensive, but I am definitely going to need to go and buy at least part of it. I'll explain in a moment. So over on Twitter, ABCBoy101 told us that free trademarks have gone and been filed by Game Freak Creatures and Nintendo, and the rough translations are Matchless Fighters, Silver Lance, and Jet Black Poltergeist, most likely for the Pokemon trading card game. That's what they're telling us. Now, the thing here is that this happens quite regularly. You see, for those that don't know, a trademark is basically legal protection of a name or symbol or logo or things of that nature. So if you want to call a new set of trading cards a particular name, you file a trademark so someone else doesn't make another set called the same thing. It's done to prevent consumers getting confused over different products. Okay. The point I'm making is, or I want to be a business law teacher then, the point I'm making here is that you have to file these trademarks in order to make sure you get protection for the name and you're the only one that can use it. And we've seen things like this in the past used for Pokemon TCG sets. And we've reported on it occasionally on this channel. So it seems extremely likely. So then, of course, the question and the fun speculation begins. What does it mean? What are these trademarks? What are they referring to? Because you see, the trademarks are not going to tell us how many cards are in a set. They're not going to tell us if there's a new type of card. They're not going to tell us about the different typings that are available within the set. Because Japan do often drop one or two types from a set to make sealed play better. But what it might tell us is the theme of a set or the Pokemon which are largely featured. So, for instance, the most recent set over in Japan was Sword and Shield 4 Astonishing Volt Tackle. And would you believe it? Astonishing Volt Tackle was a set that introduced Gigantamax Pikachu. Which we knew was going to happen as soon as we saw the trademark and the name of Astonishing Volt Tackle because that just screamed Gigantamax Pikachu. So that told us straight off the bat that we were going to be getting that big chonky boy in the set. Lovely. So what can we learn from these? And the answer is, well, let's have a gander. Now, matchless fighters, got to be Urshifu, right? You've got to imagine it's Urshifu. Because what we've basically got here is you've got fighters, so you've got the plural, and matchless fighters, strongest ones. I could be wrong, but I would be absolutely surprised if this wasn't Urshifu. Now, having said that, we're getting the Urshifu set. We know that Sword and Shield 5 is based around Urshifu. We, we've kind of already been told that. So this becomes a little bit weird. So I would look at Matchless Fighters and I go, Urshifu, clearly Urshifu. And then I remember that Sword and Shield 5 is the Urshifu set and we've already seen the trademark. So maybe it's not an Urshifu set. Having said that, maybe we get the Vs in Sword and Shield 5 and the Vmaxes in this set. That is a rumor that I've heard going around. So I don't know is the honest answer, ladies and gentlemen. I don't quite know. I'd like it to be Galarian Surfetched, honestly, but hey-ho. Silver Lance, I would also like to be Galarian Surfetch, but again, I don't think that's terribly realistic. So, I mean, Melkor over on Twitter, he has suggested that maybe it's Calyrex, the new legendary, potentially. We don't really know too much about Calyrex, but these would be sets that would potentially make sense in terms of actually linking them in with the Crown Tundra. So maybe that would be a thing. Remember that the Isle of Armor sets aren't actually out yet. They're coming out in January. So there is a little bit of a gap there. Could they be referring to a new mythical Pokemon? I think that's probably unlikely. Usually when new mythicals are coming, we do have an idea. But then again, a lot of the time people find it in the source code. And with DLC, that's not a thing at the moment. So I don't really know. Now, the lovely Tunu, who we've used on this channel a few times before... He has suggested that we've got Fighter, two pair double win, 
and Double Walls Matchless People, which he is saying is Zacian, Zamazenta, and Urshifu. Which again would make sense if we have a look at the Pokemon trading card game at the moment. We're in the Sword and Shield block. And obviously in the Sword and Shield block, we're talking Zacian, we're talking Zamazenta, and we're talking Urshifu. Although that does leave Calyrex out. That is quite important to note. We would, at some point, Calyrex would need to come in because that is the Crown Tundra equivalent of Urshifu. So maybe they would make sense. And Tunu speaks Japanese and I'll read Japanese and I don't. So maybe that's true. Of course, one thing we do need to remember is just yesterday we saw the reveal of the Crown Tundra and we got a little bit of news not limited to Gigantamax Melmetal is coming to the video games. And if Gigantamax Metal Metal is coming to the video games, then at some point we're going to need a V Max of Metal Metal in the TCG. So maybe that could be Silver Lance? The silver totally works in terms of metal, but is Lance something we associate with Metal Metal? I'm not really sure. Jet Black Poltergeist is the one that's really confusing me here, if I'm honest with you. Matchless Fighters, I'm sorry, just sounds like Urshifu. Silver Lance could be Mel Metal, Jet Black Poltergeist? Maybe it's Zashin or Zamazenta, but I, I don't really see how that fits in beautifully with either of them. I suppose this is one of those things that it's fun to speculate on, but for now, we just don't know. Now, obviously, Jet Black Poltergeist, it would be awesome if there was some kind of Gigantamax Poltergeist, and that we were getting a VMAX of that, and that was actually leading the set. But first of all, Poltergeist doesn't have a VMAX as it, or Gigantamax in the video games, as it stands at the moment. And even if it did, is Poltergeist a big enough Pokemon to lead a set? I would suggest possibly not. Never mind, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the other piece of news we have to talk about today is significantly more certain. It does come from the lovely Primal Lugia over at PokerGuardian.com, another lovely dude we have an awful lot of time for. And it is the Snorlax and Lapras V Max Collection. It is releasing on the 16th of October 2020, so just over two weeks from now. And it's currently being listed for $59.99. So it's a $60 product. Now, we don't actually have a description here, but we do have a product image. And we can see that there are eight packs of cards, which honestly strikes me as a little low for a $60 product. And you'll see they are various sets and inevitably there's going to be a couple that have already rotated. That's the nature of the beast. We've then got a Lapras V and Lapras V Max card, a Snorlax V and Snorlax V Max card, and then pins of Lapras and Snorlax Gigantamax. How awesome is that? Now, the cards do not look different. They're definitely not alternate art. And we haven't seen the same art Pokemon V, but with different holophore patterns or anything. So, unless something really weird is going on here that I can't see and they've never done before, we're not actually going to be looking at anything different with these cards. They are just straight cards from Sword and Shield. Just straight reprints of those cards. For me, it's all about the pins. I went and bought, as you saw on this channel, I went and bought the Snorlax on Morpico pin collections the other day because I wanted the pins, especially Snorlax. And now you're giving me a Gigantamax Snorlax pin? I mean, imagine if I'm lucky enough to be able to stream again in the future and for the first few rounds, I can wear my Snorlax pin. Then I can switch to my Gigantamax Snorlax pin when he Gigantamaxes, but just for like one game and then he goes back to regular and I can switch between them throughout the stream. How cool would that be? I am definitely getting myself one of these pins. I think I'm going to have to go to a third-party seller and pick it up. Because I don't know if I need this box. I've got Lapras V and VMAX. I've got Snorlax V and VMAX. I picked them up when Sword and Shield was out. It's a weird kind of product because it's cars that have been out for a little while. But remember what I say about these products a lot. Even if you're someone like me who's very competitive and buys a lot of cards and plays a lot of games, and you look at this and go, well, I've, I've got all of those pro, I've got all those promos, I've got those Vs and Vmaxes, and I don't really need those packs, and I just want the pins, I'll go buy them somewhere else. There are a lot of other people out there who do not think like you and I. Hopefully some of you watching this channel, hello. 
Because some people are going to look at this and go, wait, so I buy this one set and I get two Pokemon Vs and I get two of the awesome V Maxes, which are different and kind of textured and cool. And I get eight packs and a couple of pins. How awesome is that? That is the point, ladies and gentlemen. Do please remember that not every product is aimed at every fan of the Pokemon TCG. Different products for different kinds of fans. And even though I want the pins and I don't want anything else, there are going to be plenty of people that look at this and go, two Vs, two V Maxes, two pins and a bunch of packs. That is amazing. Now, you will notice that there is one part of this I haven't even mentioned yet. And that is that thing in the middle. It's got kind of Gigantamax Snorlax artwork, but we don't know what it is. Now, the lovely Matthew Arrive, Immunity over on Twitter, has gone and suggested it is some kind of album to keep cards, and I think that is a very sensible suggestion. It might be one with little pockets, it might be more of a kind of a cardboard thing that you kind of put cards in using little cuts in the cardboard. I'm not entirely sure, but I think some kind of album to collect or display your cards is a very, very sensible suggestion at this stage. So until somebody can prove to me otherwise, that is what I'm going to assume this is. And this is a cool product. Some people have suggested it's a little bit more expensive than it should be. That's up to you guys. And similarly, I know that if you've got the Vs and Vmaxes, you might not want to go and buy this. But if you show me a product with a VMAX or Gigantamax Snorlax pin, I'm going to go hard after that pin because it's amazing. But I'd like to know what you think about it and about those trademarks. Seriously, I want your predictions. I want everyone watching this to give me predictions for what you think those free trademarks are referring to. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time would you thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio <laughs>